All right, so this is a uh, Korea Bridge Hangout being streamed live on uh, July 25th, 2010. Uh, and what is a Korea Bridge Hangout? We're not sure yet. Uh, we're using Google Plus Hangout to gather a group of people here who are here on the peninsula to talk about what they're working on, what they're thinking about, what's uh, the talk of the peninsula. So uh, let's meet them. Uh, I believe we're all in the same order for each other. Why don't we start on the left with by far the loveliest panel member, Britt. Can you tell us who you are, where you live, what you do, what's going on? Um, I live in Busan, and I am an art and English teacher. I've lived here for a year and a half. And next to her is the very lovely Chris. <laughs> Hello, I'm uh, Chris Baki. I'm the blogger behind Chris in South Korea. And it's all about travel and life in Korea. Uh, make it a point to go to a new place or event or destination or performance or something uh, every single weekend and after three and a half years it's getting harder and harder to find new places so lots of fun. And next to Chris. Hi, my name is uh, Jason Teal. I'm an English teacher and a photographer. I have the Bajam blog and my I own Jason Teal Photography, and uh, I'm in Ulsan, which is fairly close to Busan. And uh, yeah, I try and uh, chat about uh, photography issues and things down in this neck of the woods. And I should mention also that Jason is the winner of the 2003 Busan Web Photo Contest. That is correct. Yes, it was a great trip, actually. <laughs> so I must uh, thank you now after all these years for that wonderful trip. What, what did you win? Uh, I was a paid trip to Fukuoka. Um, wow. Yeah, so it's actually a really good prize. Well, we, we need to get some photo contests going again. Uh, this is Jeff Lebo. I'm in Pusan. The day job is teacher training at the Pusan University of Foreign Studies. Everything else is working on Korea Bridge and other websites and playing with things like Google Plus Hangout and occasionally enjoying some veranda time uh, with my wife. And last but not least, uh, greetings and salutations. I am Steve the Cheer Ranger, where I live in Dongtan Shindoshi outside Suwon, South Korea. And in my spare time, I enjoy making travel videos, travel podcasts, a blog, you name it. I love to do it. And I'm excited to be here tonight. You have free time? <laughs> I always have free time. I make free time. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd love to kind of just continue what we were talking about in the pre-show chit-chat of like what people are working on and latest news with their projects, if there's any uh, events to plug, and also kind of uh, tell us a little bit about your world. We've got photographers, painters, videographers, bloggers, um, anything you can kind of tell people about how to tap into your world. Anyone jump in. Okay, well, my uh, my main website is chrisinsouthkorea.com. Um, I'm obviously I'm on a lot of other sites, including Korea Bridge, and trying my best to figure out which which sites are the best to not just be published on, but also be be seen on by by um, all of the wonderful readers out there. Um, I'm trying to start with some professional type gigs, something that involves money. Yeah. And uh, Jason, I'm sure you've heard that before. Yes, um, definitely. <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of a challenge to get into, but um, working, I've worked with some cool people here in Seoul, and there are some very interesting creative performances. There's always something happening in Seoul, and I've had to turn several of them down because I go, guys, I'd love to help you, but I have to get out. I have to go do something else. <laughs> so, uh, I'm sorry, what kind of help were they looking for? Oh, basically photography. Um, the, the idea being that it's a, it's a theater show. The, uh, the probationary theater company or um, Ryan's Camarada Music Company. Basically, the, the expat community is always doing some kind of performance or something interesting happening within the community. And um, they can't afford to pay because oh. it's not it's not a for profit thing, um, but they're usually perfectly willing to accept um, to to offer free tickets and whatnot. So. so, why did you originally get into blogging, 
and was money part of that picture and how has it evolved and what are your thoughts on where is this going to go? Um, well, for me, I, I started blogging because I figured, I figured it was, I was lazy, actually. Um, <laughs> I started blogging because I wanted to be lazy. No. Um, when I first decided to come to Korea, my friends all said, well, you've got to send me an email. So one friend became two friends, two friends became five friends. Finally, I said, guys, I don't have time to email all of you. I'll just start a blog, read it if you want, don't read it if you don't want, check in when you want, it'll be there. And um, about the same time after coming to Korea, I started wanting to see what all was out there beyond the same three bars and the same two places around town to go see. So I uh, started to keep the blog based on the travels that I took and so on. And uh, three and a half years later, it's still going strong. And money? Money is a wonderful thing. I'm not sure who all's making it. I wish I could say I was making more of it. But, uh, yeah, there's there's not a lot of money in, in blogging. Um, wow, but, you but, know, you, yeah. you should be. You are a really popular site. You are the 25,513th most popular website on the planet. You're the wow. 200th most popular website in Korea, according to Alexa. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a very it's a very interesting niche, and I'm thankful to have been a part of it for as long as I have been. Um, there's some money in advertising. Um, unfortunately, I I'm not what you would call a sellout. Um, no. There's been there's been two advertisers in the past week. We want to use your space. We want to sell you our our private loans. Um, my blog's about Korea. Oh, we know. We think your readers will like blogs or, or loans. Really? Uh, thanks. <laughs> no thanks. The, the only ads that I have on there right now are related to traveling or related to Korea in some way. The two ebooks on the left sidebar are both laser targeted at the person that will be interested in Korea or want to come to Korea. So. All right. Any any thoughts for Chris on how he can make some money? Hmm. That, that is a tough one because uh, it's uh, like especially what Chris was talking about like we've chatted about this before it's um, there's a lot of people out there that uh, want uh, photographers or want people blogging about their event or their stuff but it's uh, very little of the um, of the green stuff to to pay out and that's it's, it's a tough line to walk um, especially when you have to get to that point where you say okay if I want to do this uh, you have to give me this much money and a lot of times um, you have to be prepared for that turn down or that rejection but uh, yeah. It's a tough one. Yeah, I mean, it's a question I'd love to help answer with Korea Bridge because, I mean, you know, when I first started this Pusan Web in 97, I was the content producer pretty much. I was the one who'd go out with a digital camera and produce stuff and produce features. And now, you know, it's a world of content producers. Everyone has their YouTube channel and their blogs and their Flickers and whatever else. And it's a matter of aggregating that content and providing a space that's um, enticing enough to content producers to want to share their stuff. You know, I, I give content producers a little signature field to put in their own Google ads or whatever else. Um, but I also really want to figure out how, because people are producing great content and if revenue is being generated, I feel like it should be distributed, distributed as fairly as possible. So uh, it's certainly a question I've been thinking about as well. Interesting. All right. Well, I think <laughs> I was just going to say that um, I think one of the, um, the the new things that keeps popping up, at least in my email box, is that uh, over the last year or so, there's been more interest in international sources with their focus on Korea. And um, they're the ones that I find are usually ones that are willing to pay a little bit more. Um, so if somehow you can get their attention, and um, I'm hoping like with the the blog and having like a Korea-based uh, photography or the travel section, 
more international sources will be uh, putting their sites on Korea, getting the information and getting the photos that they want. So, I mean, there's potential revenue there. Um, for, you know, it's kind of circumventing the Korea tourism organization and doing the tourism aspect mm -hmm. um, yourself. Yeah, that's actually one aspect I haven't had a chance to look into much recently. Um, for any, for every magazine in Korea about this country, there are dozens of other countries that produce their own magazines or their own tourist getaways or something like that. Um, any number of airline magazines would probably really enjoy having um, an article about Korea or an article that they can talk about this far away place without having to fly one of their reporters out there. Exactly. Uh, How much have you tried to market your photos that way. And Jason, why don't you tell us a little bit more about kind of what you do and how you, you promote it. And also some of the clubs that you're part of. There are a number of photo clubs here in Korea. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, well, I think with the um, um, the, the marketing out, outside of Korea, it's, it's a lot to do with um, utilizing the social networks, uh, especially like Flickr and having a, um, a specific uh, Korea-based website because a lot of the emails I find are the ad agencies or the um, um, magazines that are sort of just doing a Google search to find images or people in Korea and then they will contact. Uh, so a lot of it is just um, having a distinct uh, direction for your website um, and then again like what you're saying with the the clubs is uh, there are a lot of great clubs out here that will allow you to hone your um, hone your skill especially with photography because I, I think a lot of people pick up photography when they come here and um, it's something that when you start developing it uh, it can be something that uh, you can build into a career uh, and uh, you know this solo photography, uh, Wago photographers, things like that. There's a lot of good feedback, so it's uh, those are the clubs you want to con connect with and um, get out and take some photos. So. Yeah. <laughs> are people making money with their photos here? I think we lost Mr. Jeff's audio there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. My, I was muted because uh, I I had turned my fan on. It's hot as heck down here in Pusan. It's so humid. But, <laughs> yeah. And I'm starting to sweat like crazy. But but I will sacrifice a little sweat for my my art. I turned the fan on, but it was just too noisy. So I was muting myself while I was doing that. Uh, I anyway, I had asked if if there are people you know who are actually like making money doing <laughs> photo stuff here in Korea. Uh, well, yeah, actually, like, um, I think for myself, um, you know, there's, there's photographers like uh, Dylan Goldby, uh, who's, uh, he, you know, he shoots for a 10 magazine, he, he does the uh, Seoul Photo Club, um, who's constantly doing a ton of work, um, and you can tell by his shots that there, the skill level's there, there's the, um, the stu a lot of studio work. Um, uh, a lot of the Seoul-based photographers, I find that, um, are into sort of um, the serious, yeah, you know, studio work, things like that. Um, they're the ones that are bringing in uh, the money, um, and it's just simply because uh, for the landscape or travel photographers, there's just so much, so many of us out there. It's just too easy to, um, you know, find someone who will do it for cheaper or for free. Um, but for quality say corporate work, things like that, you need someone who's got the equipment, who's got the studio lights to actually get out there and do it and bring back the quality. So. And I don't mean to only focus on the money. I mean, a lot of people who are blogging or f taking photos or videos aren't about the money, it's about the, the art. Uh, so exactly, to, yeah. yeah. There, does, there, does, there does come a point when it's, when it's always nice to, to, have, to have said to yourself, well, I've spent thousands of dollars on, on this equipment or on my travels. I, I couldn't tell you how much money I've spent on KTX trains across the country. Um, it, it is nice to get a little something for that return. Maybe it, even, even if it's uh, 
maybe if it's a beer at a bar that I've covered for some place, um, or one of the bands that I one of the bands that I covered recently for Groove. Um, yeah, hey man, we really liked your article. Let's uh, let's get some drinks. You know, something like that. You know, it's it doesn't even have to be a huge idea, but does, it's does it have it to is, be good beer, or will you work for Cuff? <laughs> uh, well, I'm drinking Cuff right now, but that's because I'm a cheapskate when I'm by myself. <laughs> but uh, yeah, well, I see, I see, I see the uh, shelf behind you, my friend. Yeah, well, that's um, I think we got to focus and probably too far to see. Um, Let's just say I have an, I, I always enjoy entertaining. Uh, living in Dongtan makes it a little harder to uh, to do so. It's about an hour south of Seoul by the time you actually get out of Seoul and so on. But um, yeah, it, it is nice to to make the money, and it's also nice to be to be seen and to be known. Um, now, but, Brit is a an artist like yourself concerned about money. Or it's just about the craft. Um. Well, now that I am paying for my studio, I guess things have changed a lot. When I first moved to Korea, I was a um, a resident artist at a Korean space, and so everything was paid for. Um, and the government was allotting money for foreigner artists. It was a really insane program as far as funding, but. Now I um, have a place in Samyang that I pay for, and the art collectors and buyers in Busan are not, they do not like abstract art. There are few and far between who like what I do, so it is rather difficult for, um, I'm not, I would like to sell enough every month to pay my studio rent, but it's not always working out that way. So. So you came here as an artist, not as a teacher? Interesting. No, um, I came as a teacher, and then I was extremely lucky in the Koreans that I met with Denmark, and they offered me a space at their studio near PNU. Hey, is it, where, where is that again? At Ajit. Ajit? A J I T. Ajit, cool... uh huh, in A G I T. Okay. It's a cool little space here in Pusan near Pusan National University. Um, okay. T tell us a little bit about that, Britt. That's where I met you. Um, it's actually completely changed now, but the first year that I spent, I spent May of 2010 till March of this year. It is an old elementary school that the government has given to two older Korean men to run as an art and music space. There is a recording studio, a gallery, um, several open spaces for artists to have studios. We had a dark room at one point. Um, very. Um, kind of like bohemian, like hippie, not exactly the best of conditions. I mean, we do have like a gallery and things, but it isn't, um, I don't know, it's not as nice as something like Platoon and Soul, which is oh, ideally yeah. what you would want, I think. Um, but the Korean really um, into immigrating like foreigner artists and Korean artists and that was really exciting because I didn't think it would it was gonna be that easy to have shows with Korean artists to have like an open forum in that way and um, yeah so just a really great community of every type of artist that you can think and always artists coming from other countries as well. It's a really wonderful space. How's your art create, creation been in Korea? Has, has this been a fertile ground for you doing your thing on the actual work? Very much so, yes. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm kind of a slow process person, but I still have had um, 
maybe five shows in a year, which maybe doesn't seem like a lot, but that's a lot for me. And the exposure that I've had and things like that have been really wonderful here. What's it like being in uh, an artist in Pusan? I saw a post recently somewhere in the Facebook sphere or something about, hey, Pusan artists would like to hang out in Seoul or something like that. Uh, is it well, harder I to be really, an artist? I want to exhibit in Seoul and I have friends that would like to as well. And Seoul is very untouchable to us. Pusan is, is so manageable and the art community is so small that I can interact with everyone and easily like talk to galleries and things like that. In Seoul, it's entirely different, and I have no idea how to go about it. Any of you Seoul people have insights? Uh, if you look in the chat window, Chris just dropped a uh, some information. Yeah, there, there's a there's actually in in Seoul um, maybe uh, maybe half half it, maybe about six months ago. There's a new gallery that opened up. It's a foreigner-owned gallery in the Hebongcheon area. Um, it's about it's it's within walking distance of Itaewon, and uh, it's a foreigner couple that uh, owns a very small space. It uh, it makes your apartment feel huge, but it is a space that they legitimately own, and it's a space that they've used to exhibit foreigners living in Korea. Um, Feel free to uh, give them a call. I've, I don't think I've covered them specifically. Um, it's not quite a, a good fit for my blog, but I've definitely stayed in contact with them, and I'm definitely happy to promote their events on my monthly events calendar because the stuff that they put out, the, the, the events they helped organize, are really some of the more interesting events you would never otherwise hear about in this country. So. Um, definitely, definitely give them a send them an email or send them a link to your portfolio and, and see what happens. Wonderful, thank you. Mm -hmm. Chi Ranger, tell us about your art. My art, I don't know if I'd really call it art, but uh, art. rather than focusing on written words about Korea or traveling, I focus on a visual medium and use YouTube to distribute uh, information, not only about Korea, but traveling in general. So since I'm based out of Korea, most of my travel videos uh, cover topics here in the peninsula, but also as I travel around Southeast Asia, the United States, wherever we happen to go, we usually film a number of projects. And not only about, say, like touristy destinations, but also about the people who live there and uh, just aspects of everyday life. Uh, in addition to that outlet, uh, the, the blog site itself tries to incorporate information um, about myself on a personal note living here and the stories behind the videos. And the new podcast is going to incorporate some different features from both the videos and the blog to help uh, answer some more questions and offer people some more interaction opportunities. I'm sorry, you said the new podcast? Yeah, yeah, I just started this past weekend. I actually have about probably, the way it's gonna shape up is, is at least for the next couple of weeks, every Saturday there'll be a, a new release. And then once I resume my travel schedule, hopefully once or twice a month uh, on, on that aspect as well. And what's the content of the podcast? Uh, well, the, the content of the podcast will cover some different news features, uh, some different travel-related stories, some information about what I do and how I go about completing the, the video projects, uh, questions I get on a, a regular basis that sometimes I've, I've addressed on one of my YouTube channels, uh, but I keep getting the questions back. Mm -hmm. more often so I figured if I make a podcast about it and they su subscribe to the podcast they can see it in the title line and it'll be easier for people to find sounds like it might make for an interesting live webcast as well well it could be you well, I, I I've done that before uh, with we were talking about, you know before we started rolling with this with with Ustream and that becomes 
I guess, a, an issue where you try to find times for everyone, because most of my audience is not in Korea. Um, I have a very global audience, most of it in the United States, Canada, Japan, Australia. Uh, some of it's in close enough to this time zone, but most of my audience is in Europe and, and uh, North America. Is that as you, what did you envision? What was the vision for the, the videos when you first started and where do you want to take it? Well, I really just enjoy telling stories. So for me, it's just a fun creative outlet. Uh, I mainly got involved with making videos because as I grew up, my family would always take trips, take photographs, invite our friends over, show the pictures, tell the stories behind the pictures. So as I went from photography to video, I just started doing that more and more often. And I found that people really didn't know that much about Korea. So I created these videos to help show people where I was going. And over time, I developed more of a presentation style for each of the videos. And it's been very helpful. It's opened a lot of doors, both with the Ministry of Sports, Culture, and Tourism, Hana Tour, uh, some businesses here in, in Korea, and you know, a div different media outlets in the Philippines, France, um, Turner Networks, Seen and Go. So it's been a lot of fun. In the pre-show, Chris mentioned, wow, you're going to get a whole bunch of new attention. Is that what he was referring to? I don't know. <laughs> really, I was really jealous of your uh, of uh, of your work uh, with Korea.net, actually. Oh well, it's, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun. It, it keeps me busy. It makes things uh, somewhat a little bit of a challenge, uh, just because I have to. I, I, Chris and I have talked about this n numerous times. You know. Uh, Joe, you know, my wife and I usually plan out our travel schedule at least a month in advance. So it makes writing and doing some of the projects for Korea.net a lot easier since, you know, we're usually about a month in advance when I, I pitch my ideas for the, the following month. But there's a lot of great content that I would like to do uh, for my site that I kind of shunt over there, um, which I don't know how, how much that would increased exposure for me but or or I do it now and because of their release schedule it's further down the line sure. on their pipeline so I would you know be nice to have everything come together all at once and you know cross cross promote uh, but it's a lot of fun I really in, enjoy my collaboration with them and hopefully uh, we'll be able to continue to do that for a long time and, and there is some money involved no, uh, they they pick up some of the travel costs that uh, when, when I go out on uh, our trips. But you're not quitting the day job anytime. Well, <laughs> you're not <laughs> stopping the day job. Well, I mean, that, and that's. I mean, I I really enjoy teaching. So um, I I've enjoyed my job here in Dongtan. I enjoy teaching at the university. I you know, I think one of the reasons why people enjoy watching my videos is because. They do find them entertaining, but there's also an educational component behind a lot of them as well that helps relay the history, the culture uh, of whatever topic I'm, I'm addressing. So it's it's fun to watch, and you get to learn something behind it as well. Edutainment. Mm. <laughs> um, and can you tell us a little bit about the video scene in Korea? Uh, if people want to kind of tap into it or promote their videos, how might they go about that? Well, unfortunately, the, the, the video scene in Korea is, is still emerging. Uh, no, back. Uh, no, uh, one, one of the, I guess, I guess the biggest drawbacks to, to being here in Korea and doing video work is the real name verification law. And unfortunately, when Google said, okay, we'll require your name to be, you know, link back to your ID and we don't have a functionality for that so we'll just disable you from being able to upload or comment when you use South Korea as your page. The, the, the problem it created is that as, as a video content creator you no longer use South Korea as your home page when logging into YouTube. So you lost sight of pe other people making videos easily within Korea. 
Uh, now, unless you follow people on Twitter or read different career blogs or, or have different Facebook connections, you know, unless unless you see someone who's making a lot of videos and, and you can like team up that way, it's really hard to find people now. But, uh, and this is one of those frustrating things that people outside of Korea might not be aware of. If you're in Korea, you've got a Korean IP, and you try to upload something to YouTube, it's going to say you can't. Uh, you have to set your settings to worldwide. Why is that? Well, it comes down to the real name verification law, is, is that Google doesn't have that system in place, so they just said we're going to disable this feature. And, and Korea does. Really... Korea still requires that for... It's internet well, usage. It's not. It's not Google that requires that. It's, right. It's it's, it's a uh, Korean law that requires it. And Google just says we're going to honor your law by disabling that functionality when you set your page to Korea, and that makes it harder for if you're in Korea to find other Korean videos because no one uses the South Korean page. We all use worldwide or Australia, England, you know, Canada, whatever. You can set any other page you want as long as it's not South Korea. Yeah. It makes it a little harder to, to stumble upon uh, a new video site, if you will. Um, even as even as a, as a as a blogger who tries to follow other other bloggers and content creators and such, it does become a lot of harder to find video sites that you don't already know about. Uh, so as a result, you do have the big names. You have the Chi Ranger. You have Eat Your Kimchi, and then you have a few other people who do some other stuff, but it's the sort of thing where everyone has to sort of know what's happening. You have to hear about it from someone else. You don't just randomly come across it. It is one of the ironies of Korea that we have such awesome internet things in some ways. I, I share my download and upload speed with people in North America and they just freak out. <laughs> <laughs> but you go into so many PC bongs here and they're still using IE6. Uh, you have this real name verification law that just dry, like you know I tried to um, they have like the pay three thousand and use the wireless for all day Nespo or Nespot or whatever mm -hmm. and they require if you use a, a foreign credit card or you you use the English interface you have to use an international credit card you can't use a Korean based credit card if you use the Korean system you have to use your citizen ID. And I'm in F visa and I still can't use that. So there are frustrating aspects of online life here in Korea. You know, I, I just, um, I, I have a solution for you actually. Get an Android phone. Uh, the, re the reason I say that, oh, well, okay. Uh, <laughs> Didn't know that. Okay, I uh, actually just uh, I, I got an iPad recently, uh, just your your basic 16 gig Wi-Fi, and I was a little frustrated because I wanted to actually access the internet with it. You know, um, after looking around and realizing that any no any number of places are going to charge me, you know, three thousand one a day, five thousand one a day, twenty thousand a month, whatever, um, I began looking into an iPad 3G. Now, what I didn't realize was on Android, at least as of, as of 2.2, I think, they, there's a wireless hotspot that's built in. There's a wireless hotspot that's literally built into your phone. It's under your menu settings and then your network settings. Um, and you literally just hit a checkbox and turn it on, and your phone becomes a 3G to Wi-Fi hotspot. And it rocks. As long as you've got unlimited data. That's true. <coughs> and that's the best 60,000 won I spend a month. <laughs> um, in other internet news, uh, I've been so into Google Plus lately, but if you want to use the Google Plus mobile application on your Android in Korea, it's not on the market. It's not on the Android market. You have to download the file separately, put it onto your SD card, and install it from there. Thank you, Stafford Lumsden, for that tip. Mm -hmm. huh. Is it, did you find the APK somewhere? Or? Yep, exactly. You just download the APK, put it onto your, your phone, and install it from there. <clears throat> yeah. Very cool. Interesting. Uh, other, the, the floor is open. Creative works, geek stuff, news. What's your pleasure? Vacation. Vacation. Yeah, what you doing this summer? Vacation. Mm. Vacation starts Wednesday. 
Um, I've got a few ideas on uh, where I'd like to go, more likely the, uh, the southern part of the country. Um, we'll definitely be traveling, but also probably taking a break for a little while. I'm going to gonna let the vlog go for a week. Uh, after three years, I've, I've yet to be away from it for more than about two days. Are so, you traveling solo these days, Chris? Um, I, most of the time I travel with a really lovely lady. Her name is uh, Kiwi on online. Um, she is a Korean Singaporean. And um, if, you, if you've met her, you'll, if you haven't met her yet, you'll have a chance at some point in the future. But um, yeah, we, we do a lot of traveling together. And uh, we have a lot of fun. Last weekend, we went to uh, Sokcho, Sokcho mm -hmm. Beach area. And uh, I'll be vlogging about that later tonight. But uh, yeah, just spent the day on the beach, had a lot of fun there. Jason, how about you? <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Um, your vacation, what are you already doing? Actually, well, my vacation doesn't start actually till um, next week. Um, so I'm just basically doing about two camp classes a day. And then um, uh, I'll be probably in and out of Busan. Um, after that, just because I've got a, um, um, a photo thing with a Filipino travel mag that they want some shots of nice. the touristy sites. So um, now that I have more time to do that, it's actually um, quite a good thing because when they first um, sent me the email, it was kind of during the last bit of the uh, crunch time at my school. So I was kind of waffling whether I should accept it or not. And with the rainy season here, the shots weren't working out too well. So yeah. um, now it's actually the perfect time. So I'll be shooting into uh, Busan uh, probably for the next three days to get the shots he needs. So it's all sure. good. Yeah. Anyone else? <laughs> what, are Brett, where are you, what are you doing for a vacation? I am going to go to Saraksan and... Um, Hike that from maybe go down the coast back to Busan. You go. Take the uh, the Bektu Dagon. Yes. yes. Excellent. I'm sorry, uh, Soul Soul Selection put out a really good book about the Bektu Dagon Trail um, a while back, and uh, if you're if you're looking to hike it at all, uh, go to any Kyobo or uh, uh, Bondi and Looney type store. It's, it's just called the Bektu Dagon Trail and even if you're only going to hike a part of it, it, it tells you everything from like water stops to altitude, everything like that. It's, it's a really, really good guide. I've, I've, I've reviewed, reviewed a re I, I got a review copy when it first came out, so it's definitely... Hey, Chris, Chris maybe you can open up like a travel hotline. Some like pay phone number where people say, "Hey, Chris, I'm thinking about going to Guangzhou. What should I check out?" And you one nine hundred ask C I S K. That'd be nice, actually. Yeah. Um, but uh, actually, yeah, I, I actually have done something very similar to that. Uh, one of my friends, his name is Jason Demont, and what he what he's doing is he's running a startup called Unanchor. And just a shout out to him. Uh, basic idea is a travel itinerary store where people that live in an area, pe people that know the area, write their own travel guide and then they sell it um, in a system much like uh, iTunes App Store where the, cr the content creator gets the lion's share of, of the revenue. Um, at this point, it's, it's still in a startup phase. It's still pretty small. But every time I check it out, there's always a new itinerary post. Or there's always a new version of the website. So it's it's the sort of thing that they're that his team is really working towards, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing where they go with it. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a, definitely a wonderful site to check out. And there might be there there might be room for an Ulsan uh, itinerary. That uh, probably would be a short list, but it'd be an interesting one. <laughs> Do you like but, living in? Hey, uh, I'm sorry. Before I ask that question, I just want to mention we do actually have people watching. We had oh, we just lost someone. We had nine. We got <laughs> eight now. Uh, if anyone wants to join the hangout, feel free. I just shared the link with my Korea circle. 
feel free to invite any of your people. Uh, if someone wants to join in, um, let us know in the, the chat room and we'll uh, bring you in. So I was going to ask, how is life in Ulsan? Do you like living there? Is it exciting? Uh, it's, well, I've been here for like eight years now. So it, it's, um, well, the thing about Ulsan, I guess, is that, to be honest, it's constantly changing. Like, um, I was just out with my girlfriend this weekend, and they're revamping along the river area. And it's just shocking um, how fast they can change stuff. Like, I've never seen a city... Um, build up that fast. And a good example was um, I actually left for a year in 2008. I was um, running a high-end coffee shop in uh, Vancouver for a while. And when I came back, they built a new part of the city. Like, uh, <laughs> you know, like we're coming in on the bus and they're like, oh yeah, that's that's Guyong Lee. And I'm like, that was not there a year ago. And they're like, yes, well, they just put it up. And... <laughs> It's the only city I've ever seen do that. And then um, in the time that I've been back, it's this, they've been constantly putting in like new uh, parks, new green areas. They just put in a brand new museum. Uh, so it's, I think they are trying to get away from that industrial armpit uh, sort of image that they have, um, which is, is it's kind of still lingers, like even with the foreigner community. Um, uh, there, there's still sort of um, a lingering distaste for the city. Um, uh, is that stereotype still still true, or is has the, has it changed enough to the point where it's no longer true? Um, I think what a lot of people, uh, a lot of the negative stereotypes just come from the fact that it's it's still Korea. Uh, so <laughs> there isn't that. Um, you know, Itaewon or even Hyundai now, how it's, it's sort of more international. Um, Ulsan, it's still, it, you've got pockets of the expat community, but it's still mostly Korea. So that's where a lot of people have a distaste for it. Uh, and, and that's the downside too, I guess. Yeah. I was going to say, it's, it's, it's amazing every time now. I, I know I'm not living in Seoul right now, but I'm hoping that when my contract is up in October, I can find something uh, to get me back up there. Hmm. But um, every time I go up to the Hongdae, the Itaewon, even the Shincheon area, there's there's something new. I'm like, that was not here last month. Where was that? Was, <laughs> I, there used to be a building right here. I know it. And then I go, and then my friend goes, Chris, okay. All right, relax. But, 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 it used to be, but, no. Britt, would you ever want to live in Seoul, or do you consider yourself a Pusan girl? Uh, I really love Pusan a lot. Um, I don't think so. I'm also from Tennessee, and this is the first city I've ever lived in, so <laughs> I think it's about as big as I would want to go. Pusan pride, sister. Yeah, I feel the same way. I came here in 95, mm -hmm. and it's all been in Pusan. And Seoul, you know, I go up to Seoul, and I feel like a country boy going to the big city, and they got all that <laughs> foreign food options and more foreigners and everything. And Pusan, I just, I like the package deal that Pusan is. I like the fact that right now I'm looking over Pusan Harbor, and I can see water and mountains and... There's a lots of it's still kind of a, a neighbor, you know, it's just a small town of four million people, really. Um, and, and the foreigner scene is, you know, it's a lot bigger than it used to be. But I don't know, Seoul just strikes me as a whole bunch of concrete. But that's just my Pusan bias. <laughs> You're not wrong on that, actually. For, for, what it, for what it's worth, there's, there's definitely a lot of concrete. Um, actually, I, I, uh, not too long ago, I wrote a quiz um, like a, a where should you come, like where should you teach in Korea? Um, like the small city, the larger city, find a rural place, or does it have to be Seoul? And uh, I've, gotten, I've gotten some good feedback on that post. Um, wrote it maybe, maybe a few weeks ago now. And um, it's, uh, it was basically written with the, uh, the person coming to Korea in mind. But uh, I suppose anyone can take a look at it and see if they think they're in the right pl the right place. But in 
constructing that, I realized that quite a few people, they don't need Seoul. I mean, a place like Busan is perfectly large enough to have anything you need. And even a place like Ulsan, even a place like Daegu, even a place like Gangneung, it's big enough to have everything you need without the aspects of life back home that you might not even miss. As long as you have a decent coffee shop around, you might not need a McDonald's. So, You've got to have the coffee shop. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and there's no shortage of coffee shops everywhere now. I mean, I remember oh, no. when Dunkin' Donuts was a big deal. And you oh, found a single man. Dunkin' Donuts, you know? <laughs> and now, I mean, you know, Starbucks invaded. But, you know, all these other Cafe Bene, and I mean, people get condescending about this coffee shop or that coffee shop. But there's a lot of decent coffee. I mean, I remember when I first went to a coffee shop in Korea, I used to call it Coffee Mool. You know, it was so... Uh, so light and thin coffee, but now you can get real coffee pretty much anywhere. Yeah, we yeah. used to we used to ride our motorcycles from Ulsan to Hyundai just to get Starbucks. <laughs> and as as bad as that sounds, we were, we were that desperate because it was um, even in two thousand three before this whole coffee wave hit, we were we were pretty desperate. So <laughs> I'm I'm quite thankful the trend is is uh, sweeping across Korea. <laughs> But uh, I was just going to say, like, for the, uh, the Busan people, um, have you noticed the change in Hyundai? Um, like, uh, I'm calling it now, like, the little Itaewon, because it seems that in the past, like, two years, a huge oh, no. shift has changed um, that beach area. Yeah, I, I, even, I, I don't live there, um, but I, I was there, for, I was in the area for uh, New Year's Eve, and um, it was as chaotic and noisy and drunken as, 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 any, as, as, a, as a proper Itaewon weekend should be, and at first I was a little miffed by it, I thought, well, if I wanted a drunken weekend, I'd just go to Itaewon, <laughs> but um, then I realized that it, it's... It's 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 an interesting community that's that's developed there. Um, it seems more driven by the Koreans recognizing an opportunity, but certainly one that is appreciated by the people there. Uh, the only question I would have is how long will it last, even uh, uh. even in the off season? But you know, you, you have to have a certain amount of buy-in from from the locals as well. And so far, I'm seeing it. We'll, we'll see how that continues to develop. I don't know what your take on that is, Britt. I mean, I don't feel like Hande is an Itaewon. I mean, what str I was gone for six years and came back and was just shocked at what happened to Hande where it felt like this modern international city. It didn't have that foreigner feel of Itaewon as much. I mean, yes, there are foreigners there, but it's not... Like, when I think of Pusan's Itaewon, I think of Kyungsung Day. I think of yes. Foreigner Alley yeah. where there's a lot of foreigner bars and you go there on any Saturday night and there's foreigners stumbling around everywhere. <laughs> uh, whereas Hyundai, they don't stumble quite as much. Hmm. Yeah, I, guess. <laughs> so um, I honestly don't spend any time there. If, yeah. Where do you spend your time? Not at all. Um, if I'm... <laughs> If I'm going to go to the beach, I would go out to Sungjeon. I really like, um, my friends and I will get a minbok out there and just kind of pretend that we're going out of town for the weekend because that's a ways away from Samyeon where I live. Um, yeah, I don't go to Hyundai very often. I've only been one time during beach season and it was overwhelming how many people are on that small space of sand. So I, I really enjoy Dalmaji um, because they're, you know, awesome art galleries and such. But yeah, I don't spend any time in Hande. D does Pusan at all have the, like, like I, I lived in Santa Fe, New Mexico for a while, and like all the rich people from Texas and LA would come in and buy their art there. Is Dalmaji or Pusan at all kind of like that in Korea? Definitely. Um, you are also like gallery 70 percent which is insane like I would say 50 50 is how it always works but they take 70 percent but um, 
say that I'm selling a painting for 1 million won, they're going to mark it up to like 2.5. Wow. So they, they have the clientele for that and um, they definitely have an amazing circulation. I'm always impressed by what ends up in these little galleries. But are, I, I guess the question I would ask where, oh, is with, with their circulation and their clientele, are people buying art at that price or are they having to set it high and then expect it to get negotiated down over, over time? Um, I've only had a few Korean friends who have had opportunities to exhibit in those spaces and they did sell things and um, they were very surprised just because they wouldn't have assumed that this, um, the buyers in that area would have liked their work. Mm -hmm. So it, it does happen, definitely, but I'm, I think I'm it's curious. near to impossible to get a show. You know, Korea is such a brand name conscious consumer culture. You know, people will pay an amazing markup if it's the right brand of handbag mm -hmm. or whatever. Does that yeah. play out in the art scene at all? Do they want, because it's a certain artist or because it's, like, can we somehow brand your name so that people will pay more for it? I think so. Um, but my, the knowledge that I have about this only comes from the gallery owners that have told me, like, if the buyers want, this is what they go for. So, yeah, there is, like, um, somebody is setting the trend for what they want, and everybody is following that. Oh, there you go. Brit Key, the Louis Vuitton of Korean art. <laughs> yeah, really, it's a little disturbing. <laughs> Five years from now, you won't be saying that you go, yes, I am the Louis Vuitton. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're coming up on uh, an hour here, so I'm thinking maybe we should head into the home stretch. Uh, any parting words, thoughts, comments, questions about anything? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, I do enjoy the, uh, the 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 portfolio of uh, of interests here. Hmm. Definitely have to uh, make this a more common occasion than a once in a blue moon. Yeah, What's, definitely. I'm hoping a wide for a breadth of talent. <laughs> this kind of worked out well. I invited a bunch of other people who from other worlds, but or you know other communities within Korea, but this kind of wound up being a really nice representation of kind of the different uh, creative scenes in Korea. Uh, and I want to thank you all very much for for hanging out. And what I'm doing during my summer vacation is literally hanging out, uh, as in Google Plus hanging out. Uh, I've been experimenting with this kind of well webcasting since the 90s and live webcasting since 2003. I had always used Skype, but Google Plus is just better. And I love this multi-cam support. And what I wanna uh, do for the rest of the summer, I think I'm gonna keep this Monday slot open for kind of hangouts and experiment with different stuff, but I'd especially love to try some different focused shows. So if any of you or other people who are listening to this or to the recording think, hey, I'd like to have a hangout about food or about sports or about K-pop or whatever, I'd love to start building Korea Bridge as a, a media channel and, and help sort of build this culture of, of hanging out and sharing it. Technically, it's not that hard. Like the, the challenge of having this conversation and streaming it so that other people can listen live and listen to the recording is not as hard as it used to be. Um, we have had some people listen, but we haven't had that many people chime in in the, the chat room. In other sites I manage, that happens, and that's really kind mm -hmm. of cool too, is to get that interaction going. So that's what I'll be experimenting with. Anyone who wants to play, let me know. Manager at koreabridge.net. <laughs> Perfect. All right, so I'll go ahead and uh, create an out point here. You don't have to run array right away. Usually I stand for a post-show, and interesting things happen there too. Uh, but thanks again to uh, all of our Hangout participants, and thanks to everyone who tuned in live. And uh, we'll be back next Monday with another Hangout and other Korea Bridge webcasts uh, along the way. Uh, have a great summer. <laughs>